You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Jay Farner, CEO of Quicken Loans, America's largest mortgage lender. Spring will be here soon, so if buying a new home is on your to-do list, right now is the time to call Quicken Loans. Learn about which mortgage options make sense for you and get a jump on your competition. With our exclusive Rate Shield approval, the low rate you lock today is protected for up to 90 days while you shop for your new home. With a Rate Shield approval, if rates go up, your low rate stays locked. But if rates go down, you get that new, even lower rate. Either way, you win. Talk to us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com to take advantage. Here's another great reason to work with us. For a record nine years in a row, J.D. Power has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction for primary mortgage origination. Again, to lock in today's low mortgage interest rate and get the security of our exclusive rate shield approval, call us today at 800-QUICKEN or go to rocketmortgage.com. For J.D. Power award information, visit jdpower.com. Rate shield approval only valid on certain 30-year fixed rate loans. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. NMLS number 3030. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Sesame Ginger Glaze Chicken Signature Wrap. How would you like it? I'll take a... Sports announcer at home? Yeah, how'd you... We just know. My wife picks up the new signature wrap. It's got double the rotisserie style chicken mixed with a sesame ginger glaze. She appears annoyed at me, but she shrugs it off. Those sweet and savory flavors are calling her name. She lifts the wrap and she takes the bite. Incredible. And now she's closing the door on my... Subway, make it what you want. Limited time only at participating restaurants. Double meat based on average six inch sub. I'm little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle and here is my spell. No, Dad, like this. When I get all steamed up, then I shout, tip me over and pour me out. (laughs) This is WWE superstar Roman Reigns. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. Visit fatherhood.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Thoughts of suicide may feel impossible to overcome. But with help and support, you can find hope and meaning. Call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-TALK to speak to a counselor or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. It's free. It's confidential. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And even if it feels like it, you are not alone. Hey y'all, welcome to the first episode of A Pod Divided for the year 2020. We are so glad y'all could be here with us. 
I am your co-host, Laura Lee, LL, and with me is my charming co-host, Aggie. Good evening, Aggie. Howdy. Howdy. (laughs) So, um, happy new year to you. And a great and prosperous new year to you, too. Thank you. Um, Okay, so here's what we have. We've gone through a lot since the last time we met at the table. and. Have we? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so we, oh, my gosh. Yeah. There's there's several podcasts worth of stuff, but we'll uh, we'll do what we can. Um, we last time we met, we were in the middle of a bowl season and we have uh, so we finished that up. In between now and then, we have one game left. We'll have the national championship against LSU, or it's LSU against Clemson. Do you have a favorite in that? I bet the Tigers win. <gasps> I bet you're right. <laughs> you have no idea. I was like so hoping it was going to be Clemson against LSU. And I, I hate to say it, LSU is not my favorite team i have issues stemming back from the 80s with lsu but neither here nor there i just really wanted it to be tigers against tigers because it would just confuse the hell out of everybody it was gonna be so epic and it did it it's coming true I'm so excited. <laughs> it's gonna be a big old cat fight so anyway in the meantime your team aggie a&m they won their bowl game didn't they we did we played against oklahoma state uh, and uh, and it's really funny. We have a tradition of having the uh, Texas Bowl rodeo. The I believe it's the night before the game, and, and usually, and I want to say I I think it's it's been pretty dead on. The winner of the rodeo usually wins the bowl. Oh. Now I, re- it, it's really funny because I remember when Texas A and M, and I think it was one of the Kansas schools. I want to say it was the purple one. I always forget which one is which, but uh, they were in, they were attending the Texas Bowl and Kansas won. And, and um, one of our Twitter friends, uh, uh, Matt, uh, bet me that uh, Kansas would win, and I of course bet against it, and they won. And so I had to change my my avi and say that Kansas is great for a whole week. I was not happy after that. I never bet. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh my gosh, that is so funny! Uh, yeah, it's 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 really interesting. But it, every every single rodeo, the winner of the rodeo has won- gone on to win the Texas Bowl. Well, how about that? Okay, yeah. so that was yeah. yeah. Okay, so that was A and M over Oklahoma State. Sorry, Michael. I In, know. Uh, I was like really feeling bad because it was going up against Michael's school, and I was like, no, yeah. <laughs> <All people." laughs> And then, um, okay, so then my alma mater played um, on New Year's Eve, playing Utah in the Alamo Bowl. And after a really lousy season, um, the team managed to wake up long enough to win that bowl game, 38-10 over Utah. Pretty impressive, given that Utah was ranked 11th, and we were like, you know, in the also runs. But anyway, that was at the Alamo Bowl in San Antonio. And then on um, New Year's Day, producer Lou's uh, Georgia Bulldogs took care of business against Baylor, um, beating yeah, Baylor. They, tw- did. they did 26 14 in the Sugar Bowl. And I guess that was enough to frustrate Matt Rule so much that he left so he can go coach in the pros because that's what we just found out tonight or this afternoon that he's going to go coach. Um, yeah. Ah, at Carolina, was that right? I, I can't think remember. So. Yeah, I or think that's East what that Coast. was. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, he's but good luck to him. He he's a really good coach, and I love what he was able to do there. He came in at a really critical time, just in the history of the program, and really helped those kids feel better, you know, about their work. Yeah, and also um, got them back up to to their. Uh, high level of competition so okay guys so there's your football report now of course 
it wouldn't be me if I wasn't talking about the Royals because yes, they are back <laughs> on the job now. <laughs> After all their holiday time at, um, let's see, at Sandringham. And uh, so yesterday they started going back to work and Kate Middleton had this really pretty, they call it plum, plum colored coat. But what I liked the most was her hat because it was very, um, yes, you should wear a tiara for this podcast. (laughs) Anyway, uh, her hat was really cool. Um, you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah by it was by hicks and brown it's called the blue fedora hat and it had some kind of like a i don't know it almost looked like a feathered type of band on the hat band so really cute it's a little bit edgy for her so i thought that was really fun um anyway what i also liked about this now watch this is really cool her blue fedora by hicks and brown looks very stunningly similar to the color of the year for 2020. And every year I like to find out what the color of the year is going to be. It's announced um, in December of the upcoming year. So about a month ago, Pantone announced that the color of the year for 2020 is classic blue. And that's kind of what Kate's hat looks like. But listen, this classic blue is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, I blue is my favorite color anyway, and this particular shade is really nice. So I like it a lot. So um, Aggie, I think you looked it up here when we were talking earlier. I did. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. It's that color of the uh, of that blue twilight right after the sun sets and, and you can still see some of the sunlight in the sky. It's gorgeous. It really is. Yeah, it's really pretty. So uh, well done for that selection. Last year or not because too long ago, it was a really bad winners. <laughs> Do what? Do what? Some of the past colors have not been winners. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Oh, there was like this horrible like salmon not too long ago or coral, but it wasn't like a really pretty shade of it. And then one time it was this awful celery green. So anyway, yeah. So this one, this one was a really good one. They, they hit the mark with this one. So that makes me want to say we have 2020. It's a new year. And for me, I'm just the same old me. But uh, Aggie, have you made any resolutions? Do you do resolutions? I seldom do because I know me. <laughs> it's not even going to last 20 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Most of the yeah. time, the resolutions, a lot of people tend to be very grand about them. Like, I resolve to lose, you know, 30 pounds in the next two weeks. Or <laughs> I, you know do more exercise or, you know, and, and they, because they're so grand, people don't follow through. So it it has always been more, it's easier to have smaller steps, smaller resolutions so that you can um, adhere to your goals and make the goals long. And so one of the things that I resolved to do this year was to actually improve my diet. I'm not going on a diet. Uh, not 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 like like my sister would think I, I would be. No, I, I just want to increase the my vegetable and my fruit intake a little bit more because I have neglected that. And okay, because <laughs> let's face it, bacon is great. <laughs> hey, girl, you will not hear me say no to that. <laughs> no. <laughs> You have your bacon, you have your cocktail. Well, of course, sometimes something you've got to give up, right? You give up the fruit. So uh, so, <laughs> so I started looking into, um, I had heard about this last year, but it's a company called Imperfect. And it's really cool because it's kind of like HelloFresh, but instead it it packages the, the uh, fruits and vegetables that farmers don't, end up selling to major um, grocery stores because they don't look particularly pretty. So oh, okay. either they're shaped weird or they're scarred or, you know, they're, you know, they, they grew stunted or whatever, but it's still a good, a perfectly good vegetable or fruit. And they've expanded to include now eggs, um, 
uh, almonds, uh, you know, quinoa, you know, and, and I'm like, how, how, how can quinoa go wrong? But apparently, <laughs> <yeah. laughs> I didn't know it could, but apparently it can. Um, sometimes uh, even coffee, the uh, farmers that grow coffee don't sell their entire crop to uh, major um, producers. So surplus coffee is also included in this. So you can do all, all sorts of stuff. But I'm going to start off with the basic fruit and the vegetable thing. And no, for anybody listening, kale is not going to be included. I just, I get that it's a quote unquote superfood, but I just cannot, I can't stand the taste of it. So, <laughs> so. wow. Yeah, I hear that. Hey, um, just going to jump in here. I asked if anybody could hear us and I both just said no all I hear are commercials so I thought I would just jump out there with that hmm okay that's odd yeah so sorry I didn't did I did I cut you off because I didn't mean to no. I just wanted to no, no, okay no. okay um okay so as you mentioned you are not going to give up drinks and I'm so glad <laughs> because then we would miss no, our girly cocktail segment. Now, okay, okay, okay. thanks. Awesome. So thanks everybody can hear us Lee. now. I'm hoping they can hear. Me too. Me too. Okay. Um, but I tell you what, Lou says we're good, so I'm going to keep going. So um, hopefully somebody will let us know if they can hear or not. So what is your girly drink for this week? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, this week's libation girly drink cocktail is the Paloma. Paloma means dove in Spanish, as well, you know. Uh, yes. Okay, that's weird. Bo says that it keeps throwing him back to the Christmas episode. Hmm. That's odd. That is. Do you want to take a break? Producer Lou, you want us to take a break for a second? See what's going on? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, he found it. It's on another one. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, Think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. 
you'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now, 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Okay, y'all. So, hooray. <laughs> we got all that straightened out. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, well, Aggie, ain't we got fun? Let me tell you. Uh, (laughs) Anyway, so the Paloma, we were talking about the Paloma girly cocktail. What's in it? Well, um, everybody knows what a margarita is. It's a uh, lime, uh, lime juice and tequila concoction. This one is kind of like it's classier sister. I like the thing. Um, A Paloma is, um, is the Spanish word for dove. And it became very, very popular in Mexico when uh, the grapefruit uh, drink, uh, Squirt, was sent over there back in the 50s, you know? Oh, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. And they would use that grapefruit soda for it. I don't like it with grapefruit soda. I like it with grapefruit juice and with club soda. So um, this is a, you know, a, a lot of people have different variations, but this one is the one I stick to. And all it is is two ounces of tequila, silver. You don't want to use Añejo and you don't want to use Reposado. You want to use silver tequila for this. Um, half an ounce of lime juice, a pinch of salt, two ounces of fresh grapefruit juice, and I always go to Ruby Red because it's mm-hmm. my favorite. And it's- <laughs> <laughs> And two ounces of club soda. And all you do is you, um, in a highball glass, that you put ice in, you put in the, the uh, tequila, the salt, and the juices, and then you top it off with the club soda and you stir gently. And it is really nice. It's very refreshing. But because it's it's winter time, you're starting to get all the citrus fruits. So yeah, it's, it's something that's really nice and light. For um, the start of the new year, I always I, I like lighter drinks. You know, um, 
I tend to leave the heavier cream-based stuff in November and early December. Mm-hmm. And after all the heavy food that you eat and all the drinking that you do New Year's Day and New Year's Eve, then, you know, you want something lighter. So um, I've always, this is one of my fallbacks because it's a lot easier. It, I'm in Texas, so it's easy to get citrus fruit here. Um, yeah. But if you can't find citrus fruit, you can always, uh, I mean, uh, grapefruit juice yeah, or grapefruit. You can always get the grapefruit juice, you know, from the store. You know, it doesn't have to be fresh, obviously. They use mm-hmm. grapefruit soda even. And so, um, but that was, it's always a good, a good, nice, refreshing drink. That me. sounds really good. Yeah. It okay. Really awesome. Really good. The Paloma. <laughs> so look for that um, recipe here after the show. Uh, on our thread and um, okay yum so Aggie you also had an interesting story that you saw oh wait first you wanted to talk about uh, the Golden Globes y'all I admit I don't watch award shows so but Ricky Gervais was going to be doing this one and I had to watch because I knew I knew the man was drawing the just going to drop daisy cutters everywhere. And he did. And it was glorious to watch. I just, I was like, I was laughing so hard. I was in tears. (laughs) (laughs) It was great. (laughs) It was so epic. (laughs) There he is. I mean, he, he even delivered the Epstein didn't kill himself line. I was dead by this point and I just I was like this is this man is glorious and everything and of course and you know that he delivered kill shots when the following day all the left can do is bitch about it yeah yeah and that's all they did I mean he even even in the last the last presentation was uh I think it was Sandra Bullock who was presenting and even then his last zinger was incredible you know and and it was it referenced Harvey uh, Weinstein or Weinstein, and I mean everybody was like gasping and booing and everything, and he just says, "I didn't do this. You did. I didn't. I don't care." <laughs> and that was his tagline: uh, "I don't care." So I'm just gonna lay it all out, and he did. It was it was incredible to see him, and of course everybody was like complaining. About it. And one of the things that I saw on Twitter was this one guy saying, "You know, just." Just wait until, you know, the right figures out that he's an atheist and he isn't conservative. But that's the, the whole point of this is that it's not politics. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if he's atheist and not conservative. He's telling the truth. This this sick, perverted scandal that keeps being covered up by, by, by you know, Band-Aids and everything. This, yeah. This is... This is not something that's political. This is this is something that transcends politics, and it shouldn't. Politics should not even matter. And it and it and he was instrumental in disinfecting a lot, and it was it was incredible to watch. It really was. And okay, you know, and and he did something that a lot of us wish we could do. You know, like because he really didn't care. He didn't care whose feelings he was hurting. He didn't mm-hmm. care. That he was trampling on anybody's, you know, uh, reputation or anything. He was telling it the way it was, and it was it, if you saw if you watched some of the expressions on those people's faces, the ones that were shocked and really angry and upset were some of the people that got into those pictures with Harvey Weinstein. You know, <laughs> sure, very very okay. few people were actually laughing. One of the ones that was laughing the hardest was Ray Romano, and it was glorious to see him laughing. He was just LOLing <laughs> like you wouldn't believe. He was like, "This is great. This is wonderful. It's coming out." You know, um, and if somebody's doing it live on TV and throwing f bombs here and there that were obviously bleeped, you know, but. It was, it was really, it was great to see. It was, <laughs> it was so epic. I mean, it was savage and it was, it was so badly needed. It really was. Yeah, I, that sounds good. So just because of that, I may actually go on uh, YouTube and look it up for myself and, and check it out. So oh, that's oh, you, interesting. You totally should. You totally should. I mean, okay. and he told everybody, I don't care. 
I, this is mm -hmm. my fifth and last time here. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Very good. So, um, and then finally, Aggie, to close us out tonight, <gasps> you found a really, <laughs> really, <laughs> we saved the best for last, y'all, seriously. You mean the ickiest? <laughs> the, it, yeah, it really is icky. It's so icky that, um, yeah, I, I, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> Aggie sent me and producer Lou, uh, an article, was it yesterday? I think it was. It was I think no, it I was. said that this morning. I think it was. was okay. It no, no, no. It was yesterday. It was yesterday. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, it was enough to just make me go, oh, my. So, um, anyway, her question is, did Cosmopolitan buy out Slate uh, and it was, I guess this was like a letter to the editor or something. Why don't, why don't you, uh, why don't you take it from here, Aggie? <laughs> it's a section that Slate Hot has on their website and it's called how to do it. I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> that, that right there is just, you're just inviting trouble, but it's basically their, their answer to Dear Abby. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a cross between Dear Abby and Xaviera Hollander, Hollander, whatever her name was, the chick from Penthouse. <laughs> the, oh, my. The oh, they my. used to answer questions. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And don't ask me how I know about this woman. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a noob, but I, 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 I've at least heard of her. So anyway. Um, okay. So basically, the, the, the link was... I am an extremely hot woman. Why do guys keep disappearing after we have sex? And I'm like, first of all, you shouldn't be writing about this ever. <laughs> <laughs> you really, sh this should be between you and your therapist, not you and Slate and everybody who reads Slate. But I mean, she's, she goes on to talk about how she went on a few dates with some guy and, uh, you know, he's, he thought that she was very pretty and impressed with her job and, and, and he was really nice and everything. And she proceeded to have oral relations with him. And, you know, he was, he thought that it was great. And then he never texted her after that. And she just doesn't get it. And apparently it happens to her often. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, here's the thing. Like Lou said, if you do it on the first date, do you always do it on every first date? <laughs> this is not a good thing. <laughs> I'm just like, I, I just, I, I really don't understand how it is that somebody can actually write this and not see and, and just be so insular that they do not see that this hookup culture is actually hurting any chances that they may have for a positive relationship, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and normally Slate is where we go to get, you know, the unintended satire. But when I found out that they had this section and I'm like, this is something like, this should be in Cosmo, you know, not really Slate. <laughs> and and I and I perused through a few a few weeks of this, and I'm going. This is not the first time somebody asks something like this either. So, <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> I, just, I just couldn't believe it. But I mean, and and it really is. It's really sad because here's a woman that, from her account, is good looking, has a good job, very successful at everything that she does. And really wants to find somebody, but she doesn't understand. There's a disconnect between what she has been told that is a good thing, which is hooking up and without any consequence, and that relationships are something that for square people, you know. Mm -hmm. And I've heard that from my nieces, you know, and, and you know, I'm one of my nieces just turned thirty, and she was lamenting the fact that. She's dating a guy and everything, but doesn't seem to be going anywhere or anything. And mm -hmm. and 
So, you know, and then I asked her, you know, well, where do you want this to go? And why haven't you gone further? Like, you know, developing in the relationship. And well, she's a part time school teacher. Well, she's not even a school teacher. She's actually a, an assistant uh, at a Montessori. She likes to have her weekends free. She likes to have her Friday, Saturday, and Sunday free. So she can do whatever she wants. You know, she parties and all, do, does all this stuff. So she's still living the whole 17, 18 year age type of thing. But she's now lamenting that she's 30 and she doesn't know how to transition into having a serious relationship with someone. And I'm like, you know, I and I was looking at her going, I said, well, maybe you have to start be more responsible with your career choices and your personal choices and your relationship choices before you can even develop further. And, you know, she got upset about that. And, and I was like, I'm not trying to say that you're not doing it right. I mean, your boyfriend sounds like a great guy. He really is. He's a nice guy and everything. Mm -hmm. But he's also not the kind that wants to develop the relationship to a, a deeper level to where they can make a commitment that's longstanding. So if she wants that, then she's going to have to change some of her habits. And she just, yeah. it doesn't click with her. And I think it's the same thing with this young woman. It's not clicking with her. She has to change those habits if she wants a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise... You know, and there's the old adage, why buy the cow when you can get the milk for free? She's giving away her milk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my well, I could say something really, really rude, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, it's probably something like what's going through my mind right now that I won't say probably. either. But... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the problem, no matter how much we want to say that women can be just as free as men and that there are no consequences to hooking up or whatever. Um, people are still are, human nature is still human nature. And it just it's still not going to work. So, are you going to say it for Bo's sake? Yes, I'll say it. I'll probably right. go to hell for it. I hope you're happy, Bo, but I was going to say that she's giving away the milk for free, but getting a lot of cream in return. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm still going to hell. <laughs> yeah, you really are. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my this is going to have an explicit... <laughs> yeah, this is this is why we're really lucky that this is just a pot. Oh, or he's excited too. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what to do now. Okay, <laughs> okay. I think um, you need to go say a few Hail Marys, and I, <laughs> I need to go put some ice on my cheeks because they are so red right now y'all <laughs> you have no idea how red I am <laughs> I can't even imagine because I am just okay so anyway the following program contains coarse language and adult themes okay uh, yes Ordy <laughs> as Jody would say we got salty on here so oh, yeah. um, anyway okay so with that I really don't know what else to do but say Again, we are uh, a pod divided, LL and Aggie, and um, you just never know what we're going to do. And that's why you stop by here on KLRN. Stay tuned for other wonderful podcasts on KLRN that um, are a heck of a lot more serious than ours. So yeah. Uh, me Meanwhile, I'll probably go to chapel tomorrow. <laughs> I, I'm going oh, yeah, to confessional day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be sure and go to confession. Y'all, thank you so much because you make it fun too. So anyway, um, good night and we will catch y'all next week. Thanks so much for listening. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here. <laughs> <laughs> So well, so pardon me, my laughter, the 
Okay, you're muted. I can't hear the music. There it is. Okay. Me, 